Hi, it's Miss Ridges here. I hope you're okay. Hope you're staying safe. As you can see, I'm in school today and for our three o'clock read, I'm going to be reading the personality potion. So I hope you enjoy. Danny Doolan was doing what he liked best. He was curled up in his bed reading. He had a chocolate fudge bar he had been saving all day. Fudge bars were his favourite. The bedroom light was off. He was using a torch under the covers to read his new library book. It was called Kid Kit Kane, Kid Detective. Kip was on the trail of the gangster Slugs Malloy. Slugs had kidnapped Kit's girl Susie and taken her to a meat factory. He was about to put her in the mincing machine. Unless Kit got there soon, it would be too late. Susie would be served up as meatballs. Suddenly, the door burst open. Danny, what do you think you're doing here? It was Danny's mum. She switched on the light. Danny stuck his head out. He blinked like a mole coming out of its hole. Nothing, just reading. But it's only 6.30. It's nowhere near your bedtime. I know, I just want to finish my book. Why don't you go out? Call for one of your friends. I don't want to. I'm too busy. Why don't you go over to the park? Go and play football or something. Oh, mum, I'd rather stay here and read. His mum gave him one of her looks. The look that meant you're not normal. His parents were always saying stuff like this. Why don't you behave normally? Or it's not normal for a boy your age. Oh yeah, mum looks a bit cross there. Danny couldn't help it. He didn't want to go and play football in the park. He preferred to watch telly or read his book, especially if the book was as good as the Kit Kane detective series. His mum tried one last time. You can't spend your life hiding in your bedroom, you know. Why not? It's not normal, she sighed heavily and shut the door. Mm -mm. Danny got up and turned off the light. In the dark, he pretended he was Kit Kane sneaking into the factory to save Susie. He crawled on his hands and knees towards the bed. OK, slugs, this is the end of the line. He drawled in an American accent. He dived on his pillow and wrestled it to the floor. In the fight that followed, his fudge bar got a bit squashed. But it was all in the line of duty. The empty seat. The next day started badly. The bus to school was crowded. His best friend Sparrow waved to him, but the seat next to him was taken. The only spare seat was next to Duncan Wicks. Wicks was in the year above and Danny always kept out of his way. He'd seen Wicks pick on young kids in the playground. We made them hand over their sweets or drinks if they argued. He gripped their wrists hard and twisted his hand until they cried out. Danny bet it really hurt. Danny pretended he hadn't seen him on the empty seat, but Wicks had seen him. There's a seat here, Specs. I'm not going to eat you. Danny sat down. He hated being called Specs. Wicks didn't move along, so Danny had to perch on the edge of the seat. Wicks pointed to Danny's bag. Got your lunch in there? No, Danny lied. I have school dinners. Wicks nodded. He pretended to be looking out of the window. Then he made a grab for Danny's bag. Danny held on, but Wicks punched him on the arm. Danny bit his lip to stop himself crying out. Let's have a look then, said Wicks, unzipping the bag. He took out Danny's lunchbox and said in a dumb voice, Well, I never. Sandwiches. Your mum must have forgot you have school dinners. Everyone on the bus was looking over now. Danny saw Laura Mills watching. Laura was in his year. With her springy black hair and dark eyes, she was just the kind of girl Kit Kane would have had to have his girlfriend. Wicks was sniffing Danny's cheese sandwiches. He turned up his nose and went to put them back. Then he spotted the fudge bar at the bottom of the box. This'll do, thanks, Specs, he said, pulling off the wrapper. That's mine, give it back, said Danny hopelessly. 
Wix grinned and took a big bite. Mmm, not bad specs. You can bring me another one of these tomorrow. Danny turned away. In his imagination, he pictured what would happen next if he was Kit Kane. Kit stood up and pulled up Wix out of his seat by his jacket. Why don't you pick on someone your own size, dog's breath, he drawled. D don't hurt me, stammered Wix. Kit swung Wix round his head three times and let go. Wix flew through the air and landed in his lap of a surprised old lady who bashed him with her umbrella. The whole bus cheered. But that only happened in Danny's imagination. In reality, Danny sat there staring out the window. He knew his face had gone red. He felt stupid and helpless. Sparrow ran after him as they went into school. He was the smallest boy in class and always seemed to keep running to keep, keep up. Hi, Dano. I saw what Wicks did to you on the bus, he chirped. Yeah, he's just a big bag of beef. Yeah, I bet if anyone had the guts to stand up to him, he'd cry like a baby. Danny stopped suddenly. I didn't see you being so tough. Sparrow looked surprised. What could I do? I was only saying, yeah, or well, don't say, unless you're going to do something. That's the trouble round here. No one ever does anything. Sparrow went away to hang out his coat. He looked hurt. Danny didn't know what, why he said that. He just felt angry inside. Angry with Wicks. Angry with himself for looking stupid in front of everyone. Danny's teacher, Mrs Morgan, had some news for them. Anyone who wanted a main part in the school play could come to the audition next Monday. Danny didn't usually take any interest in the school play. Once in, in his first year, he'd been a sheep in the Christmas play. All he had to do was go bar and lie down to sleep. But this year, the play was called Bugsy Malone. It had music and songs and best of all, it was about gangsters. Danny listened spellbound as Miss Morgan told them the story. He began to imagine himself in the part of Bugsy. He borrowed his dad's old suit and wear, wore a hat pulled down or over one of his eyes. He had chewing gum and talked in his Kit Kane accent. By the time Miss Morgan had finished talking, Danny knew he was the perfect part of Bugsy. It was a great idea, but it wouldn't work, mainly because he knew he hadn't the nerve to try for the part. The thought of standing up in front of everyone made him sick inside. The potion. On the way home from school, Danny stopped at Uncle Hal's. Uncle Hal was an inventor. This meant spending hours in his garage making a noise. The only trouble with Uncle Hal's inventions was they never got finished. He always said they still needed a little fine tuning. Then he forgot all about them and started them with something new. Danny had liked the self-sucking straw, which made bu milk bubbles all by itself. The underwater chess set had been another good idea, but Uncle Hal couldn't remember where he put it. His garage was crammed to the ceiling with old pipes, tubes, boxes, bottles and funny smelling powders. He spent most of his time looking for things among the chaos. Danny banged three times on the garage door. It lifted up and there was Uncle Hal wearing a pair of purple glasses. The glasses had two small light bulbs on the top of the frames. Uncle Hal touched a button behind his ear and the glasses lit up. Clever, eh? What do you think? He asked. They're amazing, said Danny. What are they for? Seeing in the dark, Uncle Hal shut the garage door behind them. He turned off the lamp on his workbench. Now, imagine there's a power cut and you haven't got a torch. You switch on your light specs and hey presto, you can see. Can I try them, asked Danny, taking off his own glasses. Danny switched on the light specs. All I can see are two blobs of light. They hurt your eyes, he said, disappointed. I know, said Uncle Hal. They need a bit of fine tuning. He switched the lamp back on and started to take his invention to pieces. So how was your school today? It stank, said Danny. Usual stink or anything special? This kid called Wix, he picked on me on the bus today. He's about ten times the size of me, and he punched me and stole my fudge bar. A big time crook, eh? Yeah, and you know what I did? With the whole bus watching, I sat there and did nothing like a dummy. Very sensible, I'd say. Never take on a bully ten times your size for the sake of a fudge bar. After all, when did a fudge bar ever fight for you?
Danny shrugged. That wasn't the worst thing. They go to do this play at school. It's called Bugs Bugsy Malone, and it's all about gangsters. Uncle Hal raised one eyebrow. So, what's so bad about this play? Nothing, it's great. I'd like to be in it. I really want to be Bugsy, but I can't. Why not? I won't be able to do the audition. I'll, I'll be so nervous, I'll stammer like an idiot. No one's going to pick someone like me to play Bugsy Malone. Uncle Hal put down the light specs and looked at Danny. So you don't think you can get the part? Danny nodded miserably. Well, come and see me on Sunday. I'll, it'll take some work, but I might be able to help. Uncle Hal didn't say any more. He just tapped his nose and said, Sunday. Danny thought about it all week. What could Uncle Hal do to help him get the part of Bugsy Malone? Early on Sunday morning, he rung Uncle Hal's doorbell. Uncle Hal showed Danny into the garage. Ready? he asked. Danny nodded. He hadn't any idea what was going to happen. Uncle Hal fetched two test tubes. In one was an inky green liquid. In the other was some white powder. He measured a little from each carefully into a bottle. What is it? whispered Danny. Something I've been working on all week. I call it my personality potion. Personality potion? Danny's eyes widened. What's that? It brings out all the hidden talents that no one knows are inside of you. You'll see. Uncle Hal mixed the potion in the bottle. It throffed and fizzed. He held it up to the lamp. The potion seemed to glow in the light, as if it was full of stars. Danny took the bottle and looked at it in wonder. You mean, this can help me get the part in the play? You'll be brilliant. But how do you know it really works? See for yourself, try it tomorrow, said Uncle Hal. He opened the garage door. Danny went out into the bright morning light, holding the personality potion tight in his hand. Okay, year five, we're going to leave it there. We're about halfway through that book already, so I'll read you the rest tomorrow. Okay. Have a good rest of your day. Bye, year five.